Well, joining us now, uh, Mr. Mahesh Jaitpalani. Thanks very much for being with this, for for being with us. Uh, would you say that there is a, a moral victory for Uddhav Thakre uh, in in all of this? That he may not be chief minister now, but uh, had he actually gone to the Supreme Court at that stage and not stepped down, perhaps he would have found relief. Well, I mean, certainly the matter would not have been as conclusive. I mean, it would have been hard fought. But uh, I, I, in my view, the decision would still have gone in favor of Eknath Shinde had he not. But this was conclusive. After his voluntary resignation, I had said it on the day he resigned, the very night he resigned, uh, that, that there was nothing left in the case anymore because uh, now this was, this was an independent, discrete uh, uh, event uh, which not connected with anything that went before. Mr. Jaitmilani, the court has strongly censured uh, the governor at that stage, Mr. Bhagat Singh Koshiari, for taking decisions that helped Mr. Shinde's faction. In fact, the court said that he had erred in concluding that Mr. Thakre had lost the support of the majority of MLAs. Um, is this not, uh, uh, because there were quite a few references, is this not a strong set of references on the role of the governor? But, you know, frankly speaking, I don't know why one had to enter that because he's a constitutional functionary and it was not really necessary to decide the case as you saw. The case ultimately turned on the fact that Mr. Uddhav Thakare had, had, had uh, uh, you know, voluntarily resigned. He didn't, face, he didn't face that flaw test which the governor, according to the court, uh, wrongly, wrongly decided to hold. But it's a, you know, it's a matter of subjective satisfaction. Uh, I have to disagree on this point uh, with the Supreme Court very respectfully. I think there was enough material for the governor, right, to, uh, to, ho to call for a flaw test. There was sufficient evidence that the Udav Thakare majority, uh, uh, Udav Thakare government had lost its majority, a fact which was not only subsequently established by the fact that uh, uh, Udav Thakare refused to face the flaw test, which the courts have repeatedly held that when a chief minister refuses to face a flaw test, it means it's an expression of lack of uh, majority in the house. Right. And then the governor had no other cho choice but to call, the, call to, uh, Mr. Shinde to form the government. Uh, now, I, actually, apart Mr. from that, if yeah. you look at the overwhelming numbers, yeah. much, one minute, one, one more point, Vishnu. Apart from that, the, uh, Udav Thakare lost by much more votes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the vote of confidence in favor of the Shinde government was by much more votes than even those members sought to be disqualified. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I understand so that. The, but so the governor's assessment, the governor's assessment was right. The court may feel that he didn't have enough material. But ultimately, in hindsight, Udav had lost his majority. No, I take that point. But uh, in, in terms of the decisions by the governor, a constitutional authority, and the propriety of the decisions taking, for example, what the Supreme Court said, and I quote, and this was very strong. The governor did not have any objective material. Yes. And the exercise of discretion of the governor in this case was not in accordance with the law. Um, again, what does this say about the role of the governor? Well, I mean, uh, the, the, the court has made that finding. And frankly speaking, I res as I said again, I respectfully decree, uh, disagree with the Supreme Court. In my humble view, the governor did have enough evidence before him to call for a flaw test. But five wise men sitting on the bench and uh, five, four wise men and a woman sitting on the bench, right, have decided otherwise and I have to bow to that verdict. But I can still critique the judgment. Sure. And on a television channel where you make only quick exchanges is not the place to do it. I will critique that part of the judgment at an appropriate time. That's interesting. You, you will critique that part of the judgment. You, f you feel that there was something wrong yes, I think, in, in, in I, yes, the I think, I think one has to be fair to constitutional functionaries as well, no matter what. I mean, there, is a, there are two sides to that aspect, whether he had enough material. Remember, the court is making a judgment it did not have enough, that the governor did not have en enough material, right? According to me, it did. Now, there are, that, 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 you know, the court has decided and the Supreme Court is right because it's final. So we bow to it. Yeah? But that doesn't mean I can't express no, no, by all the means, Supreme sir. Court and, and, a dissenting and, and, and that's what we are talking about here. Yes, but, you yes. know, just with regard to Mr. Koshiari, yeah. in fact, there's been a reaction which has come from him uh, on this judgment. And he said, again, I quote, I am, no well, law, I am not a law student. I did what I thought was right at that time. What can I do when I have someone's resignation? So the other side of this is if he has a resignation, he has to decide. 
But exactly. Well, I mean, if the super, if the if the governor, if the governor has to has to reach a subjective satisfaction, right? He can't be faulted for it. He may have made a mistake according to the Supreme Court. That's fine. But no, nobody should criticize the governor for taking a discretion, for exercising his discretion in a particular manner because there was material. The Supreme Court may have felt there's not enough material. Sure. So there are two views to it. That's all right, you know. Let's look there at the can larger be, there can issue. Be nuances in this situation. Got it. But Mr. Jaitmalani, the larger yes. issue is that the entire uh, issue of disqualification yes. has been sort of bumped down the yes. road, as it were. I mean, we, there's been no decision on that at all. It's going to be now up to... Uh, a larger, um, a larger set of judges uh, to to actually decide on that. That would essentially be irrelevant going forward, right? It would possibly send a strong message, but by the time it's all heard and a decision is taken, it may not necessarily have much of an impact on the ground. It's been too long. No, the the question of disqualification has been left to the discretion of the present speaker, right? With certain guidelines laid down by the Supreme Court, that is salutary. I mean, I think that's good. The speaker should the speaker should know the limits of his discretion, mm -hmm. right? So that's a good thing. Uh, as far as we are talking about the reference to a larger bench, it's about a particular aspect of when the speaker's disqualification, right, to judge on a case on the basis of the fact that his own majority is being challenged. That's a very limited issue that has been referred to a larger larger bench. It won't affect. As it I understand, it, Mr. Jaitley, and correct said, me if I'm wrong. The, the power to decide on disqualifications yes. will rest on the speaker until a larger panel of judges rules on it, is what the court seems to have said. So it would come, come yes, up in court yes, again in the yes, future. Yes. All right. Uh, one final question. Yes, this could come up in yeah. court in the future, but it, it can't affect this present case. The present disqualification will be by this speaker. All right. All right, sir. Thanks very much uh, for joining us. Uh, it's, a, it's a very important judgment. Nothing changes Thank on you. the ground fundamentally at the moment. But there's been a strong message from the Supreme Court. You can agree or disagree with it. Uh, but I yes, think uh, that's, you know, I mean, that's quite clear that there, there is a strong message. Thanks so very much uh, for being with us. Thank you very much indeed.